In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the risen Jesus, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Friends, we conclude our Easter season with this celebration of the Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the promised Spirit, the Spirit that enlivens us, encourages us, challenges us in our discipleship of Christ. And as we stand now humbly before the power and majesty of our God, we again remember God's unending gift of love and mercy and proclaim the forgiveness we know in Christ Jesus. You were sent to him the contract of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctifies your whole church in every people and nation, pour out the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives, who reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and to ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Emelites inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, 
both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have much more to tell you, 
but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare to you everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Growing up in Taunton, my mother's mother, we called her Nana, lived with us. And Nana owned the TV. And so she had dibs on certain shows that she really liked. I remember distinctly Gunsmoke was one, Perry Mason was another. And one of the game shows that my grandmother loved was to tell the truth. Remember, to tell the truth. There's a new version on these days, but you know, it just doesn't live up to the old to tell the truth. And at the end, they, you know, these three contestants would, would come in and try to stump the uh, famous uh, the, uh, the board They'd come up with all kinds of questions to find out really who is this real person. And at the end, they'd say, well, the real such and such or so and so, please stand up. And then they'd have an awe and then it would happen. But it's very entertaining. And it's still, you can still see the black and white reruns. That's one question that I've had as we come together to celebrate this feast of Pentecost. Will the real Holy Spirit please stand up? Are you the boisterous, courageous flame driver who shakes up a timid group of hiding disciples? Are you the rhythmic, life-giving heartbeat who guides in all truth. Really, Holy Spirit, who are you? Are you very public, like wind and flame that can't be missed? Or are you patient, quiet, the presence working deep inside us? Are you power? Are you longing? Are you strength? Are you desire? Will the real Holy Spirit please stand up? Perhaps all these questions, though, box the Spirit in. If we're looking for an easy, definitive description of how, when, where, and in whom the Spirit acts, going to be disappointed. Trying to pin the Holy Spirit down to a specific manner of manifestation is like trying to catch the wind in a box. It can't be done. And then to add to that, on this Feast of Pentecost, the scriptures we've heard give us diverse descriptions of the Spirit's activities. From those descriptions, those activities, we just begin to scratch the surface of discovering who the Spirit is. What we do get from these descriptions is that the Spirit is Jesus' gift to us throughout the ages. A gift guides and strengthens and challenges 
our faith, our discipleship. The Spirit helps us to move beyond the barriers that usually separate people, race, class, language, gender, culture. That same Spirit unites us, though, in a plurality of gifts, a great diversity of talents and abilities. So we work together to proclaim the Lord Jesus, a proclamation of word and action. For way too long, though, one of the ways that we have taught Pentecost is to say it's the birthday of the church. Well, yes it is, but when we talk about the birthday of the church, we're almost talking history, an event of the past that we're just celebrating or commemorating or marking. I like to use the term Pentecost is not the birthday of the church, but it is the birthing of the church. For this feast, just as we hear Sister Kathleen proclaim in today's first reading, this feast today calls us out from behind locked doors, wherever they and whatever they are our lives and in our world calls us out from that hiding. And this outpouring of the Spirit tells us that indeed we are a people who are gifted. Gifted in ways that this world so desperately Gifted with wisdom for a world searching for meaning, with knowledge for a world seeking insight and truth, healing for a world torn apart by violence, gifted with prophecy for a world in need of direction. Gifted with discernment of God's presence, God's Spirit, for a world of too much competition and rivalry. The power of the Holy Spirit worked wonders in and through the lives of those first disciples locked in that upper room. The Holy Spirit has worked wonders in the lives of believers down through the ages. What wonders will the Holy Spirit work in and through you and me, in and through us today? Possibilities and potential are endless. It's up to us in our cooperation to answer. Will the real Holy Spirit please stand up? As we celebrate the outpouring of God's Spirit and the gifts that that Spirit brings, we now renew our baptismal commitment. And so, friends, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? 
who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at God's right hand. I, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church that we are proud to profess and proclaim. And we do so, united in God's Spirit, with the outpouring of His grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we now offer these intentions. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church with light, that we may be assigned an instrument of Christ's love for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the whole world, guiding the nations to reconciliation and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, strengthen the sick and suffering of our world, relieve their pain, and rekindle their hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, encourage men and women to respond to the call to ministry. Give them courage and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, welcome our beloved dead to paradise. Lead them to celebrate at the eternal feast of heaven. This Mass we remember May, Chase, Julie Ferraro, Francis L. Donovan, Jr. on the fourth anniversary of his death, Monsignor John J. Reagan on the sixth anniversary of his death, Henry de Gagne, Paul Boyer on the first, first anniversary of his death, and Pedro de Camille on this fourth anniversary of his death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire with your love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O oh Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your prayers. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and
Let us stand as we pray. O God, who bestows heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a minute or two or three. Friends, a number of announcements this weekend. First, we celebrate with Father Gabriel who this weekend marks the 24th anniversary of his priesthood ordination. Congratulations, Father. <laughs> we are so blessed to have Father Gabriel living that priesthood here in our Somerset Swanson uh, community, so thank you so much. Next year is the big party. Not that we've been reminded or anything, but next year is the big party. Also, we have received word from the bishop's office that following the uh, instructions from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as of May 29th, uh, the pandemic restrictions have been lifted for our churches. So what does that mean for us here in our Somerset Swansea Catholic community at St. Patrick, St. Louis de France, and St. Thomas More? We will, for this weekend of Pentecost and next weekend, the 28th, the 29th and 30th, we will still be gathering at St. Thomas More. But the first weekend of June, which is June 5th and 6th, we will revert to our former Mass schedule. We have seven Masses that we celebrate in our three churches. And the schedule will be posted on our websites, it will be posted on banners, it will be in the newspaper, it will be everywhere to be seen. But all three of our church buildings, our three worship sites, will be opening without any separation, you know, of, uh, for social distancing. You, you are not mandated to wear a mask. You do not have to write in or call in to reserve a place for Mass, and you don't have to check in as you gather for weekend Mass. We want you to come back to Mass. That's the important thing. And I really need your help, because no matter how much we can say it, until we are blue or red or green in the face, all three of our churches all three are reopening on June 5th and 6th. People love to talk and say, we're closing this, we're closing that. We are not doing that. We are opening on June 5th and 6th. Spread the good news, and more importantly, show up and join us in person for our celebrations now. I would ask them, this is all dependent on our being fully vaccinated. If you are not fully vaccinated, we ask you to please consider the health of the entire community, all of our health. And so, don't be afraid to wear a mask. If you're not comfortable coming without a mask, you are most certainly allowed to wear a mask if you want to sit in a, a more separate area, I would suggest coming to a non-crowded Mass. The 4 o'clock Mass is most crowded on a weekend. If you're afraid of being around some people, maybe consider another Mass that is less populated. But if you are feeling ill, or if you have not been fully vaccinated, especially if you're not been vaccinated, please wear your mask. We are not going to be the police, though. That's not my job. Um, I'm, I'm trusting and hoping that people will have the truth and honesty within them uh, to, to uh, show that forth. 
But if you are not feeling well, if you've had a cold or the sniffles or the flu, worship from home that particular weekend. It's all common sense and a, a good sense of the community as well. But we are most anxious to welcome you back. It would be so good to see our churches full again. So please spread the word uh, near and far, uh, the, the good news, and give thanks to God for that gift of healing and that gift of the spirit that enlivens us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Deacon has been practicing that for 50 days. <laughs> he did a good job. Happy Pentecost.